Hey, you fit your hair back out again with another one? Rust. And crusty. It should be, it's all one thing, isn't it? Rust and crusty. Anyway, I got the trunk lid here off of crusty. Um, a lot of old cars, when you buy them, you look at the trunk lids and you run your fingers along the bottom of the trunk lids and everything is bad inside. I ended up replacing all of this section here and the, all the outer section lip here. Made it all with simple tools and got rid of all the rust. No more holes in Krusty's trunk lid. Stick around. Back at Krusty. All right. I'm going to do some more body repairs here now. Uh, I'm going to see. Hopefully, this one don't get in too much of a headache like the last one. All the rad sport stuff. Uh, well, that's all done. I got all that put away now. And I'm back at the steering on the car. Uh, I'm waiting on some machine work. So, let's do something else. Here, I got the trunk lid off the car. It appears to look lovely. Bit of surface rust. Minor. Okay. Here's the problem. It's all gone in there. Let me flip this over. This is all gone down along here. You can see it's all flaking off. The entire lip is gone. Over here then, same thing. All the lip is gone. So what I got to do, this is a common thing. Mustangs are bad for it, okay? Uh, the trunk lips rotting off and stuff like that. The Fox Body Mustangs. We could never find one around here with a good trunk lid on them. But uh, all I'm going to do here now, this is like a trunk lid repair. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the inner structure and I'm going to replace the outer skin. It's only a small lip, which is nice. I got a crease here. If I never had a crease here, I'd probably take it up to here anyway. But I'm just going to replace it to here so that way I can keep everything nice and small all the way along here. And I'll put an entire new lip all the way along there, coming along there and have it so it folds in right nice. But what I'm going to do here first now is I'm going to remove the latch and the lock and I'm going to turn around and take the uh, the grinder and uh, strip this off see what I come up with the uh, this is part here this is the only repair that I saw that I, I at first on the car was this trunk lid repair you can actually see it was done a while ago because look someone's using torches on it that wasn't yesterday that repair wasn't so I'll dig all that out and get this trunk lid stripped off and get all the paint off it shouldn't be that hard there's only one coat of paint on it so i'm just going to strip it off the same way i stripped the whole car most times when you're stripping cars you can use chemical strippers um uh, what i like to use i can't find them for the life of me uh but i use like a 40 strip a 40 stick it this is a hook on this uh on a regular oscillator these oscillators do these palm sanders are like a finishing sander but you'll get an orbital one that rotates around and it's got a locking mechanism. You can turn it and turn it to stripping mode. And that's what I like using on them. And plus I got a great big five inch one as well that I use for stripping. But because of the process that I'm going through this year and I got rust to deal with and stuff like that. I'm going to go ahead and strip all this off. And get it ready. And I'm going to show you how I go about doing this stuff here. Can't sandblast it. Metal's too thin. I'm going to treat this the same way I've done everything else on the car. I'll get, get into that. But for now all I'm going to do is get it all stripped apart. And get everything on the inside here stripped off and out here stripped off ready to do the repairs. I'm just hitting the top of it 
and I'm cutting the top down. When I get to the metal, I'll stop. I'll go back and I'll buzz all this over after. But I'm being, being very gentle with it. I'm just removing the paint as I'm going. And uh, I'm using a 24 grit disc. It's a bit harsh for some people. This is how I've always done this. I've been a bodyman for years. I had to stop here because this takes me back. Look at the old yellow high solids. Look, when I first got into the trade back in the mid 80s, this was just coming on the high solids primer. There were still, or here locally anyway, here locally they were still using lacquer. So when I come into the trade, we're still using lacquer primers and pink putties and stuff like that. And the transition was in the process of coming out with these uh, new primers and stuff like that. And I can remember the yellow primers. Every every company had a different shade. Some were darker than others. And this kind of like reminds me of like the old RM stuff, right? And then, of course, you had the old white filler. And uh, it's, uh, you can see the polyester potty right here that they put on it. I never liked mixing two of them together. I always found it was a headache because polyester... White filler was very coarse and porous, and you couldn't get it smooth enough. And the polyester potty was really, really fine. But two of them had different sanding characteristics. And if you put one over the top of the other and then sanded and broke through, you'd sand the filler quicker than you would sand the polyester. And you'd always end up with waves all over the place when you start mixing the two fillers together. So it was either use one or the other. And if you were going to use it, it was all right to use it for a, t a top skim coat. But if you cut through it, you are going to have waves. Look how thick that is there. Look. It's not bad. <laughs> yeah. Back that up a bit. Here you go. You can see the shadow of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good, pretty wild. No filler. I figured I'd just stop and show you that there. You're probably watching me thinking, Tony, that's very aggressive. It's not aggressive. Uh, this is slight metal, and uh, I'm not heating it up. I'm moving it around. I turned the grinder down a small bit, so it's not so aggressive. It's just faster this way, okay? Um, trying to take this off of chemical strippers and all that type of stuff. Oh, I've, I've done it all, okay? Being a body man, we've always wanted to get the panel stripped fast. This is how we've done it. And you've seen before when I turns around and I measured one of the metal metals that I grinded. I'm not removing much, and I'm not even doing it on this here. But you can still see this little some factory gray primer here. I'll go back with a 40 stick it now, and I'll buzz over all this and give it all a wipe down. But uh, you know, that's it. I shed a little repair area here somewhere along the way. Something dropped down in there or something. I wonder if it had something to do with the damage was on the roof. But uh, it's quite interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead now, get the rest of this stripped off, and we get started doing some metal fabrication. So there it is, all stripped off. I'd say 20 minutes, I'd say I'm into this. And this still needs to be gone over again. I'm not too concerned about it because I still got to deal with these rust blisters that are in it. And I don't have to worry about them right now. I just want to get everything stripped off to see how bad everything was. The damaged area here. She took a fine knock. Where that filler was too is um, not that bad. It was just right there was a low spot right around there is extremely low and I managed to cut right into the spot where it was low but everything else around is pretty good right just got a little bit of a wave and it seems like something struck it here and like there was damage on the roof so I don't know if they had something to do with it it was insurance work I'm going to say back in the day I say it was just the repairs on this are done in the early the mid 80s somewhere around there but I got that done and then I went ahead and I stripped all the rust where I thought was on the lip back here, I stripped all it off, took the seam sealer out of it. This side here is good, all the center is good through here, I'm not going to get into that. Leave that alone for now, and then of course down here, look. All the lip, it's no good in saying we'll save this bit, we'll save that bit. The whole works if it's going to have to be replaced. Most of this is going to have to be replaced down through here. So it's probably just as easy to come up through here and cut that off and put a piece in there. Over here then, like there's the center there. How bad that is. Going on there and then over on the end. Same thing. Just a little bit of a lip on the side of it. Take note of how the corners are folded. See the way they're folded. That's uh, uh, I've done that many a times. Usually when, when you got two pieces of metal, I just cut directly across here. So when you fold it over, it goes on a triangle like that. And you can round out your little edges and make them look pretty and stuff like that. And then you just tap in around and roll the edge, right? It's all I've ever done with the corners on cars. When I done, when I done them, same thing there, right? But what I'm going to do here now, first thing, is clean up this mess. Look, 
all over the floor here. Oh, everything is covered in dust. Turn the fan on, blow everything off, sweep the floor up. Let's get this mess cleaned up because that was the body filler. And then we can get started. So I got everything back to normal here. Everything's cleaned up. Got everything blown off again. So, perfect. So we got the trunk lid here now and I got it all cleaned up. And the first thing that everybody's going to do with this now is cut all the rust out of it. No, don't do that. Don't touch nothing, okay? Leave everything just like it is because there's some critical shapes going on here. We got our heights here. We got our distance here. We got our angle here. All that is still here, okay? Um, the problem with this trunk lid, if you look at this here, see the distance here? Touches over there. Touches over here. So this is not a right angle. Even if I done it in two pieces, it's still... It's got a curvature going to the whole trunk lid. So you got to take that in consideration that this got a curvature on it this way here. Okay. Now it's flat going this way and it's about a 45 degree angle here. So what I intend to do here now is I'm going to replace every bit of this right along here. The whole works of it. Get clear of it all. It's a lot easier to turn around and try to put a piece in here and a piece in there. And I got this rolled edge here and I'm thinking about... I might just weld to the rolled edge. I'm not going to worry about doing the cotton butt. We'll see when we come to it. It's just a lot easier, especially with this lighter metal. Now, this trunk, this inner trunk metal might be heavier. I'm not quite sure, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Because by welding it on the rolled edge, you can blend out the weld, and you'll never notice that it's been welded, okay? Down here, it had to be cotton butt, this type thing in this corner here. I figured I'm cutting it through and through here and replace this section here. But what I got to do first is I got to get a piece of metal now to go from here to here. That's wide enough that I can bring it in here and I'm going to start to shape it so that it actually comes in and flush here and it's got all this here fitting. So I got the uh, the shape of it going this way on a piece of metal and then I'll mark it and I'll bend the lip up. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. First things first, let's go get a piece of metal. Get a piece of metal that's probably about from here to about here. That's probably, say, that wide. And then uh, we'll start there. So I got a piece of that 18 gauge shelving, cabinet, whatever you want to call it. You've seen me use a lot of it on this channel. It's got an edge on it still on one side. I cut the lip off one side and I got the, the lip is still on it. I haven't bothered with it yet because you know, there's no need of uh, wasting the grinding wheels cutting this up. So now I just lined it all up on this here, centered it off pretty good. And got it so it's hanging off a bit on either end. And you can see the shape of it here now, okay? So what I got down here now is I took the scribe. And I went along here and I scribed it in along here like that and put a line on it. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to come back and cut that and trim this to fit the, this into that lower lip right there. I want to just take that shape there first. It's the first thing I want to do so that way I got the shape of it going this way here. Okay. And uh, what I'll do first, you can see I got lines marked down here. I'm going to go ahead now, take the grinder and cut these off here and start tucking that in and fitting it in right nice and snug along there. So that's my first cut. And I got it laid in place there now and you can see over here now it still sticks off a bit. See the distance off here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go back and I'm just going to trim wherever it's in the way and get that tucked in so it falls right into that bottom section right in here this lip that's where I want it to fall to right in there and then that'll give me my actual shape of the back of the car so I'll play around with this now with the cotton wheel and the 24 grit just start shaving off bit by bit fitting it shave it fit it shave it fit it till I got it where I like it So I'm happy with S2 there now. Okay, I got it all trimmed up, grind it off. It follows the flow of the trunk lid now all the way along. I marked it over here, a little uh, mark with the grinder just so I kept returning it back in the same position every time. Now that I got this done, what I got to do now is I got to mark it in here parallel to this. All I'm going to do is I'm going to use three-quarter tape because this is the height and that's 
quite, uh, a lot more than the actual height on the end of it when you bend it up. So I'm going to take three quarter tape now and just want to strip it out right along the edge of it there. Just so then I got a nice edge that I can mark, describe along there. And I'm going to bend it. I'm going to bend this lip then, bend it up at about a 45 degree angle along here. And that way the shape will stay the same and I'll have a lip on it. So I put the three quarter tape right on the edge of this here and went along it. And then I took a marker and I marked right on the edge of it there. And don't worry about getting it on the tape or don't worry about getting it on the thing like that. Because all I wanted was a nice edge, something along the go by. So now when I peel this off, I got a nice straight line going along there that I can use for reference. And this is how I'm going to bend the lip. I'm going to use my old trusty vise. I'm going to put the line on it here, every four or five inches, whatever the way this is, I think that's about six inches there, that is pretty straight. So I'll bend it, bend it, bend it. I won't take a full bend on it. I'll just take that a bit, just do that with it. That's it. Then I'll move on, I'll bend it again. I'll move it over here and I'll bend it, and I'll bend it, and I'll work my way around it. I only got to get this in about a 45 degree angle. I'll have to run through it twice. And when it's all said and done, I'll lay it out on my eye beam and I'll take a hammer and dolly and straighten up this lip. There I got it all dollied up, and I'm quite happy with it there now, looking down across it. The angle then everything's on, you can see the way it falls up against this here. It's got the angle there looking good. So what I got to do now is I got to trim it off. What I end up doing is I took these, measured it off, and I marked it out. You can see the scribe line there, I can get it in there. Move it over so you can probably see it better. See the line I got scribed there? So I'm going to turn around and cut that off. Up here on the end now, uh, right here on the end, this is this wide. But then I want it to turn up a bit and come across this way with it at a bit of an angle. So I'll come in here now and I'll just cut this up blindly this way and, and trim this up after the fact, but cut the center out. Because I'm going to work on getting this fitting in here now because i got a little relief here and a little relief here i got to put into it. And there's a couple of reliefs down here on this end i got to put into it before I actually uh, can actually start fitting it into the panel. So I'm going to go ahead now and mark these up here and then uh, put a mark up this way somehow and then just blindly just cut this off. I'm going to leave a little bit more there than what I got marked. So I went ahead, I got it all trimmed up, then I dollied the edge of it a bit more, kept test fitting it, getting a nice tight fit against the back side here, trying to get all that straightened away there now. And I still I got lots of material up here that I can still cut off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to mark this up here, trim off this corner, make this look presentable looking here on this end here, and then cut a bit more of this off here. I got two marks put here where I got to put reliefs, uh, two little relief sections there, and I got to worry about the ends till I get there. And uh, other than that, and I also got to trim off this upper lip. But I'm going to wait on that yet. If you look, you can see it's pretty high. I'm going to wait on that there until I get all the inside there and I'm happy with it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and trim some more of this off. Because I know it's got to be moved this way more. Um, just a small bit. So I'll get this trimmed back and just cut back on this corner. So all this is ready to go. So I'm getting close. A few more trims here and there. Uh, what I got to do now is I got to put two little relief bends in this here because this here this section right here is higher than the uh, The sides here if you look at it when you stand it up you can look in here you can see the gap Okay, so what I got to do now is I got to Raise up this section up here and up here just to bring this whole section up a small bit it only goes back I think about an inch and then it goes flat across the bottom here again, right? So I'm gonna do that first uh, Before it does anything else everything else. It's pretty good out along the outer edge here Got some tweaking and I have to do, but nothing serious. So I'm gonna get this here straight in the way now. And how I'm gonna do that? Just clamp it in the voice and hit it with a hammer.
So as you can see now, I've got the little reliefs in there. They're dropped off there. Comes across there, another one there. That's just the way it was from factory. Steps down, and I can just basically cut all that out if I want to. And so I'm fitting it all pretty good around here. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a scribe line along here. Okay? And scribe. This is the original lip here that's still there. Now I need to get this to drop down a bit because i got a wrapped over lip. But remember, we're on top of the panel here, so... When we scribe this across here and cut this off flush here, what will end up happening when we cut everything out of the way and drop this in place, this will drop below this section here on the inside, so it will give us enough for a rollover lip, and we will have a nice straight edge to go off it in. We'll know what the actual lip looks like, because when we start grinding this out of the way, we're going to lose it, but I'm trying to use as much of it as possible to make the panel. So I'm going to scribe a line along here now, and take this off and trim up this panel. So you can see the scribe line there. I'll just cut right along that there now, clean that up. I'll leave the line there and I'll just cut on the upper side of the line and cut that strip off and that'll be my inner lip. So I got it trimmed off and you can see it there now, a few little spots sticking up. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the grinder and I'm just gonna grind that flush to the original panel and then I'll have that panel made and I'll have the shape that I need for outside here for this section here before I grind this off. I'm gonna measure this here now to make sure how wide this is right across. That way I'll remember it, I'll know and I'll mark that here on the car. So I'll know exactly about this measurement here because when I start grinding all this way, this is gonna get thinner and thinner and thinner. But I want to remember the distance from here to here. You metric guys are gonna be so proud of me. 18 millimeters right there. I started playing around with it and I said, no, I'm gonna do that in millimeters now. I can use both. <laughs> so I got that all cleaned up along there and you can see as soon as I start getting shiny metal out here I stopped so both of them were the same height then right now what I got to do I got a bit of relief that's coming down here through this here that continues on so I got it marked there now I'm going to put a little relief in it there and same with over here I got one here as well what I got to do is because this got to go back this way I got to move the line over a small bit so I'll uh, probably redo that again now just thinking about that because when I move this back, this line is going to move outwards, so I'll probably run the line just a little bit shy to this side here. And all I'm going to do is the same trick again. I'm just going to use the voice over there. I'm going to take something and hammer down to that and use the voice to do it. And uh, that way I can get that nice shape going on there. So as you can see what I was doing there, I was using the actual trunk lid to actually get the shape of it to go down on this here kind of flows into the here now and I got that here and I can push down it, that can be butt welded along there, okay? I got the lip along, done along there, same, done the same thing over here, used the hammer to dolly it up to go down this here and that there can fit there nice. So I'm ready now to the point to start removing stuff from that other one. I'm going to remove this back lip now, I'm going to grind the edge off it and just clear away the section so the inner skin is let go and what I'm going to do I want to leave the outer skin where it's to for now until I use it for reference until I get the inner structure done because when I cut all this off you're going to see uh, everything's going to fall away this is one of the reasons why I like leaving things together and not just cutting everything up I always got a reference an original factory reference to go by As you can see, you saw me grinding off the little lips on them. There's the inner lip there. 
All it is grinding it off, that was right there like so. And all it is I grind is flat edge of it, because this here comes down and rolls in over the top edge of it. And this here flanged over, you can see it over here on the side better. It's got a roll flanged edge on it. And there's a couple of spot wells here and there, and I've come across a couple over here, one here, one here, but there was no other spot wells on the rest of it. You see the rust here? See? This is how these always end up. This is the lowest point in the trunk lid. When this is turned upside down, and any moisture and water, it go, it's going to go to the lowest point. And there's always this edge here, and all this in here ends up filling up with moisture and dirt, and if it gets leaves running in there, and then always rusts out. And the problem with these early cars is, is none of this was painted, okay? All the skins were put together, fit it together and then paint it with everything over the top of it and what ended up happening is all this in here started to rust that's how all this is so many cars from the 70s and that rusted out here and uh, it was amazing that uh, they never figured it out until years later i don't think but i got that straight away now i can start test fitting this again and i can start getting ready now to see how much of this i'm going to cut and remove out of here i'm not going to disturb this too much because i still got the outer skin here so I'm using this as my jig here now to hold everything in place. But I gotta start trimming this out in here now and just get most of this out of my way so I can start installing this. So I ended up cleaning up this corner. I cut the corner lip off it itself and I wanted to see how bad this corner was. So the corner was good. I was figured it was gone right up into here on both sides. And I turned around, I just cleaned it up. I took the lip off it, okay? But the outer skin is still on it. And then I cut it off across here. I'll install that piece later on, that little lip that goes on there. And then I went and laid the piece in place and marked it all the way around so I can see where the panel actually sits right now. And I want to cut a lot of this out of the way. I got the same thing done over here, see? So I'm just going to come in here now, blindly now, and just cut a big pile of this out of the way just so I give myself something to get this piece out of here. And uh, we can start fitting this piece in there then. There, I got that all cut out. I'm trying not to disturb this piece here. I don't want to move it around much. I'm trying to leave that in the where it was too, because I'm using that as alignment. Uh, everything come out good. There was two spot welds here. I still got to clean them up. You can see I just broke off the metal there. Got them across, tore the pieces out of her. But like, there's the pieces that come out of her. So what they look from the back side. And again, beer metal, see? Oh, that's beer metal right along that lip. And that's the way they all went like that. And they ended up rusting out. All kinds of stuff got built up down here. And you can actually see in some spots, like over here, you can see stuff that was caught up in there, right? So, what I'm going to do now is I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to start fitting this piece in place, get that cleaned up, and then I can start fitting this in place to see what it's like. Just a quick test fit. And you can see the way it lines up with the lip. It's the same height as the outer skin there now, and that's where I want it to be, because now i got the inner structure removed, so now two of them are the same height. Over here on the end, it sticks up a small bit, because this here is still overlapped, okay? But everything's good up. What i got to do now is up here, still a little bit long, because i got this where I want it to go now, and I can still see there's a fair bit up here now i got to trim off and trim off. And the more I'm thinking about it here, like, I'm not going to do the cotton butt up on this here, okay, up here. I think I'm just going to do a lap well on this roll edge here, but I'm going to do a cut the fit down through here. Uh, so I get a nice finish down through here and don't get too thick. One thing I found over the years when you're going doing this type of stuff is trying to have your overlap panels. Try not to get them too thick, right? I've done repairs like this a lot over the years. This is just something that rots out of these cars. Almost any car that has trunk lid cars around here, usually the back some rots out of them, right? But I'm going to trim it back. Up here, I'm just going to do a little lap joint. Right close, there's very much, not much left there. And I'm just going to weld it and you can grind it. You won't even see it. Because I don't want to go getting in and try and do a cotton butt on that. And disturbing this out here. And I'll put the two plug welds back in here. And I'll do the same thing over here. I'll do this to like a cut to fit. 
over here and uh, I'll scribe it and then cut this piece out of it and have it so that I can actually weld this and this here will be butt welded here and it'll be an overlap along here. So. So I went ahead and I got everything cleaned up, okay, sanded it all down, I left the inside alone because I want to use that like a protective coating, so I left that alone but I cleaned off the outside here, I'm going to end up painting this in here when I get the panel put on, I had that time back I should have left that, but that'll be fine, okay. Um, right here then I turned around, I put it on, I marked it with a marker and then went back and then scribed it again with a marker. Uh, so I got a, an actual black line, then I took a scribe and scribed longer. Because my plan is here, as I'm going to we'll cut the fit right here and then fade it out. I want to remove as much as I can here. I'm going to do an overlap here. Here in the middle, I'm going to do a cut the fit because I want this flush to this here. And same thing over here. I'll do um, an overlap here and a cut the fit here. The reason why I'm doing an overlap is I'm really having a lot of troubles with this car with uh, butt welding stuff together because of the type of metal it is. If it was a later model car or sorry it was like a 50s car or something I'd probably do cut and, cut and butt along here but I'm just trying to save myself time. Uh, this should be fine. This is on a rolled edge and anytime you come across a rolled edge you can do a little bit of an overlap and you can grind it and you'll never know it's been there right. So it's just, it's just making life a lot easier for me that's all that is. If you want to do the cut and butt along there you can. So I got, like, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim off as much of this as I possibly can so there's very little left up here, okay? So I'm going to go ahead now, get all this stuff trimmed up, ready to go so I can fit this in and get it welded in. So I got everything cut back here, you can still see the line right here, I just got a little bit of material left there, and then over here then I've done the cut to fit, I'm still going to have to trim this up on this side here when I get it all fit in place, here in the middle same thing, this is pretty good though, here in the middle, that there goes in, that's a nice flush fit there, so that'll go like that, I got the two spot welds put back in there, so I'm going to start from the middle here, and this is what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to clamp this in place to start from the middle and work my way to the outside. And then I'll just trim up this outer edge. There's not very much material there that i got to worry about. And i get that all welded in place as well. So I'm going to go ahead now, start fitting this in place, and start welding it in.
So there, I went ahead, I got it all welded up. You saw me there welding like an inch. This is on an inner structure, and there's a lot of strength there, so the heat transfer can, uh, you know, go through the metal a lot more without warping everything up, so you can put a lot more heat into it. So it's not like you got to do spot welds all the way. I welded every inch, skipped an inch, welded an inch, skipped an inch, and then come back and done it. But you could see me over here. I did the cut to fit over here, and then I did the overlap over here. When you watched me welding this here, it was touch, 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 because I was burning this metal up. But when I got over here, I was welding this to this here, and I was using this as the main structure to lay down over it, and I could just run beads. And it was just so much nicer just to be able to do that than what I was doing over here. Because if I had to do the cut and butt on all this here with this particular metal, oh, I would have been swearing on this today. Right, this much here on both sides was tricky because I, when I started to weld it, I just started melting this up here. I turned the welder right down, and then you start welding it, and you just get a real high weld out of it then because you're not getting really good penetration because this metal is so thin. But you need that in order to actually get this from melting. Okay, so I got that all welded up there now. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go ahead now, grind all this up. And dress it and if it needs to be re-welded again i'll re-weld it again and grind and dress it again so when uh, i comes back this will be finished so i got this grind up for the first time but i want to show you something here like when you're doing the lap welds like this here don't be concerned about getting it perfectly flush and smoothed out because you're going to have to go back and give it a second pass do not cut into it too much because you're going to weaken this metal here and you're going to weaken this metal here. So I just knocks the head off it and I'll go back and I'll make another weld. Like you can leave that like that if you want to and then fill over it, but I always like finishing off my edges. So look along here now, I'll go back and I'll re-weld all this again along here and I'll grind and dress it again. But the ends look, they come out pretty good, right? A couple of small spots I got to touch up down there. And over here, this side here come out good, right? Got the nice flow going up through here that rotates around there. Okay, right. so I'm going to go ahead now, get this all re-welded up, and get it all grind up again, and get this finished. So I went ahead, you can see, I welded up both sides, all completely again. While I was waiting for that to cool, I went ahead, and the piece that I cut out had a little drain hole it down here in the corner. So I went and put drain holes back in the corners again, just drilled them out. And what I did then, I put a couple more in it. I put one here, one here, another one here, and then of course the ones on the end, same as what they were factory. Because when you look at this here, this here kind of like rusted out along here, so it's going to need drain holes down here for it to drain off. So I went and put a couple more extra drain holes in there. Now this is cooled off enough, I'll go get all this dressed up, and then I'll be finished with the inside. And there you have it. All welded up and grinded up. You can see it up through there. Little reliefs in it here. Steps up here. And I, that there was got, I done a butt weld on there and grind dress that, put two spot welds in it there. And then I double welded this in here, just did an overlap on it, rolled it off the edge there, and dressed it, as you can see. And then over here, then there's a cut to fit over here. And you can see the little relief just flows into it like so. And I tapered it up, and then I grind it all the dressed up, and then I went and drilled out a few holes in it. Now, so the inside is finished. And you can see, like, the way I went about building that, uh, I kept everything together. The hardest thing I found out over the years is that when you start cutting things out of the way, you think you know what you're doing. You think you're going to be able to fit it back together, but it's always tweaked off this much. And it's either out too far, in too far, tweak this way, tweak that way, something like that. The angle's not right. And I just found that when you left everything alone, the best template you've got is the car itself. So, and I just built everything from that and just get, moved it all forward. Because when you overlap panels, you build the same shape. So when you cut the panel out, it falls down into place. So it'll actually take the shape of it. So now that we got the inside done, now we got to make the outside skin. And I'll uh, flip this over here and you can see now what I got to deal with here. I got a few holes over here I got to deal with. And I got a lip that I got to do here. Now you could probably want to just put that back in there and put a lip on the top of it and weld it right across, but I must have a nice st straight edge on this here. So I'm going to build an inside lip with a bit of an outside lip, probably come up to the top edge of this here and just cut and do a cotton butt right along in through there. And I got a bit of a repair to do over here, so I'll probably repair this first. So I'm here now and I got it flipped over and jigged up here. So now I need to find a piece that I'm going to put in here. And I want something I got to put a lip on, roll it around. I thought about like this here is longer than my break, okay? So I was saying to myself, like I can make it in two pieces, but I'd like to make it in one. Then I went through my collection of steel and found this. 
These are corners off a um, locker door, and I hung on to them. I got a pack of them there, so they got a nice crisp edge on them. You got a couple of holes there, but it don't matter that because I only want about this much of the bottom of it. So I'm going to uh, trim this up here now and uh, get this here so it's the right size on the inside and on the outside here. And then I'm going to turn around and start setting this up to flatten it over on the edge. But I'm going to cut off a length, the length of it first. So I need to cut a lip off the back side of it. And this is what I come up with. I got a piece of flat bar here clamped now to the piece and I got it back the distance. All I'll do <coughs> is I'll actually ride the grinder right along this here and use this as a guide so I get a nice straight edge all the way along there. Because trying to cut that freehand when he looks in there it'll be going back and forth. So now I got a nice straight edge to go by and I'll just cut that off like so. So I went ahead and I trimmed up the other side as well using the same process. Then what I went and did is I cleaned it up, just took the edge off it, and then I went ahead and I painted the inside of it here. All I used was just a simple old rust paint, okay? Just no old truck stuff that I got kicking around. I buy it on sale. It's rust paint. I don't use nothing special. just likes putting a lot of paint on stuff. I also went and painted in here as well to get the bottom side of this all straightened away. So that there will be done. So when it folds the lip over and goes over, they're going to be paint between the two materials. So I got this painted as well. Now, the next thing I want to do is, is I want to fold this lip in over, okay? I don't like doing just this here and then tapping it around. I like trying to get a complete lip in it. It's kind of hard to get this here to curve the trunk lid uh, the way I want to. So I'm going to take this now and flatten this over. All I'm going to do here is I got an old yardstick. I'm going to put that in between the two of them, like so. I'm going to clamp that in place there now. And I'm just going to hammer that down flat to that there so that it's got a distance there when I pull this out and slide up in the car. I'll just clamp this in place here. I prefer to do this. I do this with door skins and everything. It just makes it easier to do it after.
as you can see it gives you a nice little roll lip over and then they got a nice clean edge all the way along the bottom side of it there now and they got the lip folded in over so what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to go over and do a test fit on it and start trimming this up for the actual trunk lid itself So you got the little lip folding over the edge there. I got to trim up this corner here now. I'm going to have to make this end after the fact, but I'm just going to worry about this for now. Um, also, out here, again, because of this car, uh, out here I'm going to mark this and trim most of this off. I'm right on the roll edge here, so I'm going to weld that. I'm going to do a bit of a lap joint here and weld it on because we're on an edge. And again, I can hide the actual uh, the place where I'm to. You can see it there where I'm actually got that put up to. Trying to do a cut and bought across here on this metal, it is a nightmare. Okay, so if there's uh, some vehicles, uh, that I'd say like all the older muscle cars and stuff like that, you'd be able to do a cut and bought if you went through here. I have a nice ridged edge around here, so I'm going to leave it alone, and I'm just going to weld it right along that edge there. But I'm going to get in there and remove most of this first, and I'm going to cut off these ends and get them ready to go. So, get this trimmed up now, and I'll mark this, trim up this inside piece, and get ready to install that. So I went ahead and I got that all trimmed off. Now over here, I got some holes. I'm going to cut a piece out of this here now, and I'm going to weld this piece in here, make up this piece, put the little rivet, the little roll in it, and come back with like this here, and, and weld this piece up first before I put the lip on, so I got this repair done. So I'm going to get this now, get the cutting wheel, cut this out, take this over, and make up a piece to fit there. So here's a little piece, you can see the shape that i got to bend it up on. I'm just going to put this through the middle of this now, and bend it up. So i got that crease in the middle of it there, and then I'm going to trim it up around, and fit it on the car, and then cut it off. So it's the same as the other one. So I'm just going to do that in the voice. So all I'm going to do is bend that up right here.
Simple little patch. All I'm going to take the zip blade now and I'll cut it off right there so it's all even the same way. And I can start installing that uh, lower section on that now and have that done. So I got that all tack welded in place all the way along there, letting it cool off there now. I'm going to go ahead now and work these ends. I'll start from this end here because this is where I start my welding. And I'll cut this off here and dress it on the inside and weld the end on it, get a little lip and everything put on it. And uh, so this here it will be done.
One little trick when it comes to dollying panels like this here, door skins, all that type of stuff. A lot of people have a tendency to lay their dollies flat on their panels like this here and hammer into it. And when you do work with a door skin, you end up damaging the upper part of the door skin. What an old guy taught me years ago is to hold your dolly, nice flat dolly, hold it in your hand so your fingers overlap, let them touch the car, and just let the edge of this ride along the edge of this here, and your fingers just slide along the panel. That way you won't get no damage up here. There you have it, all grinded up and finished. So the lip is all done there and I went ahead then and done the inside. I grind and dress that. And I put a couple of spots on it. There's a couple of places, one here, another one here. Another one over here where I just put little spot welds on them. There were there were holes that were already in it. I just welded them up and then grinded them off. In your corners, you got the nice finished corners on them, right? See over here. It was all ready for seams here. I got lots of paint inside that there. It's got a factory appearance to it. It's not thick or nothing like that. It's a nice thin edge on it, just like it would have been from factory, all the way around to the corners. Right? Nice thin edges. That's the way he wants to have them. Yeah. But uh, that's a neat little job. So you know, you know, just cutting the rust out of a car was never ever wise. Uh, it can help you in the long run. So you know, repairs like this here, it's good because I've done repairs, like I said before, and you cut it all out. And when you weld it all up, the best place to have it is on the car if you got to cut it out, because the problem you run into then is. You don't know where the panel goes on the car, right? At least the way I done this here is I kept everything intact and I made the inner structure first so that it all went in place. So it's brand new there now, no rust at all in between the panels or nothing like that. I get all this prepped in here now and all that'll be cleaned up and painted later. But the metal work is done on the trunk lid, so that's another project done. Anyway, I'm gonna leave this one here. I hope the tips are good. And until next time. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, hit like and share. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit subscribe down the bottom of the page. If you want to donate to the channel, down below there's a button, super thanks button. If you want to click on that, it'll take you through the motions of making donations to the channel. We greatly appreciate it. We also got merchandise. Pop over to fitziesfabrications.com and check out our merchandise. We have hoodies, sweaters, t-shirts, and stickers to choose from. Thanks for watching.